Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to the Canada Desert Only Challenge. This entire map is comprised of desert and this is my second attempt at this challenge. We are of course playing the illustrious Wilfred Laurier who has all of the bonuses when you're living on tundra. But there is no tundra here. It is all desert. I am essentially playing a sieve without bonuses. In fact, I, it's worse than that. I am playing a sieve with a negative because I can't declare surprise wars and I have to win by domination. I will never get to use my ice hockey ring. I will never get to use the last best wish. I will never get to use the four faces of peace. And I will probably never get to use the Mountie or the Mountie's abilities. In fact, I am not just playing an average sieve. I am playing a worse than average sieve. This sieve is actually technically worse than a sieve with no bonuses. Yes, it is that bad. That is the challenge that we have set ourselves. I'm going to settle in place and then spend my time working a one production desert hill. Now, the last time I attempted this challenge, I did actually have fresh water, which was quite the boon, I might say. But what the hell am I going to do with myself this time? I do think that scouts paid off quite well because I was able to pick up a little bit of extra gold. I think going for a few early units here to clear barb camp for cash might be the ticket and I'm immediately going to research animal husbandry because that might make a tile that actually has food and production on it appear which I don't know if I've told you by the way as well in this game every single sieve that I'm going to be facing has bonuses for being in the desert we've got Mali we've got Egypt we've got Arabia we've got I think Babylon is in the game Samaria is in all of these sieves can live in the desert and do reasonably well and so that's what we're up against we're playing a below average sieve against sieves that excel in this environment and it is a grueling punishing horrific challenge and i hate the person who decided to set this challenge for me i wonder who that could be just who would be devilish and devious enough to set a challenge this sick okay we got a boost for astrology that's really not great but i would like to get a religion this game i think that religion might be our only saving grace like the the pathway to 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 salvation is through religion in this particular game like the only food tiles that we have in our capital are three oasises we're gonna need to get food from our religion somehow we just we have to get food from somewhere we just can't be we can't be not eaten okay <gasps> oh this is big we managed to find valletta and we were the first to find valletta and valletta will allow us to buy city center buildings and encampment district buildings with faith i did get 20 horses that that is just that is insult to injury the game is trolling me now it's like oh you didn't find any horse resources here you go there you are hope that makes up for it buddy i really want a pantheon but plus one production is just so good it's just so good how can i turn up plus one production i think one of the things i might do differently this game is to try to actually get a settler out being scouted by barbs we found singapore i mean we're the first to find singapore and singapore is pretty good because you get plus two production for each foreign civilization you have a trade route to as well as plus one production when you're building buildings which is quite handy bit of a double-edged sword of a start here some things have gone in my favor and some things have definitely not gone in my favor well we found the incans just to give you an idea of a sieve that's going to be really good in the desert he's able to build these terrace farms on these desert tiles so he's going to be absolutely dominating in growth i would consider the inca mali and arabia to be my three like late game raid bosses that i'm gonna have to go up against and i'm very much so not looking forward to that day lahore now that's a city state we can win the game with the knee hang boys that might be a key part of our domination strategy so we need to keep lahore alive but if we can get those knee hangs build up an encampment there's a theoretical build going on here. Also, we found a really nice place to put a settler. And I think this settler will be going on a very long walk up here to the northwest just to grab the best, highest quality land that we can grab. Never mind, it's right by Mansa Musa. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you know what, lads? <laughs> I'm going I'm to keep, keep it real here. I don't, I'm not winning this one. Right, listen. Look, yeah, there's, there's a certain percentage of starts that you just know you're not going to win. This is one of them. I saw his capital. I saw his cities. I started on flat desert with just hills and oasises. He had floodplains. And sh look, look, it's okay. So you just got to admit, I'm not going to sit here and waste three hours on a game. I know I can't win. We're just going to try and get a slightly better start. Maybe 
with like a tile of floodplain. Just one, just one tile of floodplain. It's all I'm asking for. It's all, it's all I need, okay? We'll get there in the end. See, so, you now this is playable. This is, this is, this is playable. This is, you know, this is okay. Now the question is, where do I settle? That's a hard choice, actually. We've got plenty of fresh, fresh water. I could settle on top of a wheat. Part of me wants to step across the river and settle on the desert hill there. Or potentially on this chunk of wheat. Yeah, I want to avoid being near volcanoes. While they are great for yields, they're not great for the quality of life in your city. Let's just put it that way. So I think I'll give up one wheat tile to the wheat gods to start with an extra, you know, we're, we're, we're growing quickly is what I'm trying to say here. We've got a lot of food. A rare, rare monument first attempt. Let's pick up horses and pray that there's some horses in the area. There's a couple of candidate spots near me. I would love if I could start with some horses because that's going to be where my production comes from. Wait, no, I should start with a builder here. 100% I should start with a builder because I can put a tile. I can improve all, like a wheat tile, a wheat tile, and then maybe a horse tile if I find a horse tile. So I think that's the choice. There's horses. Horses on the hill. This is actually even better. I'm so glad I didn't settle there now. I got really lucky. <laughs> I got really lucky. The question is, am I going to go for the early holy site again? And I think I will. I think the early, the going for a religion holds a lot of value. It's one of the few ways that you can get early yields in your cities that scale really well. And faith just has a lot of uses as well. Do I go for the early pantheon? It's not a very early pantheon. I think we go for the Hail Mary Pantheon play because we have a relatively okay capital in terms of production and food. If I attack one more time, I will level up, but then both of these guys might attack me and kill me, so I need to play it a little bit careful. There we go. Irrigation boosted. Now we've got a four food tile. Remember, every two food that we bring in that supports one population in a desert city, that's a lot of population. Drop down a horse pasture. Look at that. A 1-3 tile. This is like the herald of good days. I cannot believe that we have workable tiles in the desert. There we go, yoink, there's a 30 gold. Now I'm sitting on 150 gold, I could buy units. And then we'll drop a third and final improvement. And we're well on our way to craftsmanship. I gotta, I gotta be honest with you guys, I do not see a place where I could settle another city. Nagazagarmu! <gasps> Nagazagargamu. Nagazargamu. I don't know how to say it. But land combat or support units are 20% cheaper for each encampment building in that city. Plus another plus one production towards our units. I'm very, very intrigued by the potential of a Nagazagarmu gold-based game. Let's pick up mining for basic improvements because most of the map is, you know, desert hills. I almost said garlic hills. Dude, I'm just so hungry right now. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not talking about food. You gotta get, they got to build your minds of those garlic hills. I could go for state workforce or I could go and grab the trader from Foreign Trade. Trade with Nagazagarmu. I would like the idea of trade. A relic! <gasps> I got a relic. I got a relic. I got a relic. I got a relic. I got, I got a relic. And I found a natural wonder. Oh my god. This, okay. This is the urn. This is the urn. We go full eco and we try to eco our way out of this problem. We're going to eco living out. I think this has, a, this, I have a chance. Depending on the Pantheon that I get in the next three or four turns, I have a chance to take this all the way. Okay, let's just hold our breath here. Look through the list of Pantheons. What do we got? River Goddess? I sleep. No Desert Pantheon? I sleep. Wonder Building? I sleep. Culture from Pastures? Actually pretty based considering we do have a horse. That's plus wood culture. That's half a monument for the entire game. The wood I was hoping for, the Lady of Reeds and Marshes, was not there. I would like River Goddess, but in this particular game, I did place my holy site off of rivers. You know, there's a lot of volcanoes on this map, so maybe Fire Goddess could be really, really strong. A lot of them are active. A lot of them are going to be erupting. So Fire Goddess, I think, is the, the long-term play. It doesn't get me any value right now, but over the next, in the next while, I will get something from it. No, I've been scouted. Get the hell out of here, scout. Leave. Leave. Leave me alone. So we found the seam, the map seam. This is where the map has been stitched together. This is this usually occurs because this is like eastern half of the map and this is the western half of the map. So mark my words, that's where the map line is. The goal behind picking Magnus is that I get that 20% growth bonus in my city. And anytime I'm trading to my capital from my own cities, I'll get plus two food into my, into my city. As well as being able to train settlers without using population. Because population is quite difficult to come across on this map. We're having a little bit of an invasion problem from this barb camp. Which I'm not very happy about because he might go ahead and pillage this resource. We are about to go into a dark age. And honestly, maybe a dark age is the correct play here. 
If I go into a dark age and then go into a heroic medieval era, maybe that's the real move. Date workforce and bronze working are finished. We didn't hit any iron in the capital. Very sad. Sad. -ja. And I'm feeling pretty good about this until I look up here and I see that he's on 24 science and 15 culture and then I kind of weep a little bit for myself. But if I can get feed the world here, this is going to be a very different game. Ooh, nice eruption. That's actually great. I wish I had the money to buy these tiles now. <laughs> oh no. No, I don't have the money. I'm broke. John the Baptist, welcome to the fold. No other religions exist. Oh my God. We're eating good tonight, baby. Welcome to Feed the World. I don't think there is another belief here that I take. It just is a Feed the World game. Full stop. End, end of discussion. The difference between having Feed the World and not Feed the World is six food and four housing in my cities. That's a lot. I mean, choral music would be fantastic. But Feed the World makes my cities like workable. <laughs> it makes them actually functional. And to that end, I think I also take Gurdwaras and just take as much food as possible. Because this is like the only source of food on the entire map now, which is incredible. Genuinely, genuinely incredible. I would like to get a builder so that I can improve these hills. And then I'll get a settler and a trader. Builder, settler, trader. That had like the cadence of like the Super Mario music, like da 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 da. Builder, settler, trader. <laughs> Tell me I'm don't 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 disagree with me. I'm right. Okay, I'm right that that had that cadence. One thing I should definitely be doing is spending my gold to buy scouts because I would like to get a golden age here. And the more players I meet, and the more city states I find, and the more tribal villages I clear, the uh, the better a chance I have of getting a heroic age. And a heroic age would be a big game changer. One thing I learned, by the way, after nearly seven years playing this game, is that the battle cry promotion only works when you're attacking. It doesn't work on the defense. Even though it doesn't say plus seven combat stent versus melee and ranged units when attacking, it only works when attacking. And that was such an infuriating moment for me when I realized that was how it worked. Now, theoretically, I should be buying these, but I really need to get uh, scouts because there's a limited amount of time in this era. And I got a lot of era score to pick up, like tribal villages and stuff like that. Because if I get that golden age and I can use my faith to settle cities, again, a game changer. A weakened spearman from the volcano. Oh, it didn't work. Feck. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it didn't work. Don't spawn a unit. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It did it. It spawned a unit. Shocking stuff. This is starting to look like a city with some abilities. Look at that. Improved river. We got Oasis. And by that I mean the tile, not the band. AAA. We just met a third city-state. Boosting us into political philosophy. Uh, I think this game, it's an absolute no-brainer for me to take autocracy. So I get that plus one to all yields for each government plaza building or diplomatic quarter building in the palace. This is just plus one food production, gold, faith, science, everything in the capital. Also, I should have had urban planning plugged in. I can't believe I still had God King plugged in. I'm an absolute moron. No, my holy site's under threat. I grab myself a quick slinger to defend the city. I'm so infuriated. <laughs> I'm so... I was... Why? Why? Maybe I can bait him away with a builder kind of scuttling around on the edge of his vision and he might opt to not pillage. He's going to pillage it. I know he is. I can see it in his eyes. Like, you, you can just tell sometimes. The AI barbarians, they woke up this morning. Oh, wait, no, he's chasing me. Amazing. It actually worked. I, 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 a very strange gambit. This is the chase that never ends. Look at him, he's chasing him. I, all I have to do is stay in the hills and he won't be able to catch me. Picked up plus one envoy and man trading with Kumasi this game. That's going to be huge. Kumasi gives you plus two culture and plus one gold for every specialty district of the origin city. I'm kind of torn between internal and external trade routes. I know I've gone for an internal build, but some of my ex... I might have to do a little bit of external trading. It might just be the way to play for now. I got another envoy. I could put a point into Granada. No, I think if I got Susan Tree of Kumasi, that would change the game, especially if I could trade with Nagazagargamu. And if I sent a trade route to Kumasi, and I'm about to get a trade route, I could have Susan Tree of Kumasi and start generating a ton of faith and gold, or culture and gold, rather. Jesus, man at arms are already out. God, living in a desert world is a horrifying existence. Just like the never ending stream of units that are capable of murdering me but, uh, as quick as they could look at me. If I delay settling, I will get a free builder with every city settled, which is a significant bonus. So I am going to delay. Um, I am going to delay settling. I think I play for the ultra, ultra, ultra late game. 
and see if we can survive in a desert world. A desert hellscape. The classical era ends soon and I'm not anywhere near prepared for the end of it. Ugh. Can we trade with Kumasi? Oh, Kumasi's out of range. Feck, right. I'll take Suzuki of Kumasi with an envoy. That actually gives me a lot of vision about the map. And then I'll trade with Nagazagargamu. And that trade route is worth four gold and two culture, which is a significant boost. So what's the opening play in Winnipeg? Probably to buy this Oasis tile, because look at that. That's a beautiful tile. Three food, four gold and two culture. If I can move in an essentially a straight line to the east, I might be able to get a circumnavigate. And if I can get a circumnavigate off, that'd be a, ooh, that would be a big bonus because I need, I actually really need the golden age. Tribal village helps. I need a golden age or I need to meet a few people in a, in a very sh short space of time. Unfortunately, a couple of my scouts were murdered. Building on volcanic soil will give me a little bit of error score. We're in an error score race here. I could build a horse unit and how many turns is the question? Seven turns. I don't have enough time. 320 gold. Well, there's actually 300 gold from him. So we've got a horseman potential purchase here. Fuck, I need to buy back. I sold too much of my horses. Wait, no, I'll have enough horses by the, by the turn I need it. Okay, I just need to not spend any gold. That is a plus six commercial hub. I really should build it. It's a lot of gold. We have provision now. So Magnus is locked in and ready to start producing settlers. And, and that, that's why I need the golden age. If I get the golden age, <gasps> there's another player meet. Honor to meet you. Mutual open borders with you, good sir. Mutual open borders. How about mutual open borders? I could get a little bit more money from selling open borders and not doing mutual, but I find mutual just improves your opinion too much to not do. I think I can safely buy that tile. I'll have enough gold to still buy a horse at the end of this era. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. It's two turns. It's going to be close. It's going to be very, very close. It all depends on this scout. Finding literally anything this turn. <gasps> Chinguetti, that's plus one. One turn, one turn. Build a farm on this. Era score, horseman, era score. I need two era score. Where am I going to get two era score on the final turn? Oh, right, I can spread my religion for era score. I just had to convert Winnipeg. It converts in two turns. Hang on. <laughs> We're going to do what I call a pro gamer move. <laughs> You know what? A little pro gamer move. <laughs> Delete the footage. Oh my god, mysteriously, we still have five turns left on this era. Wow, that was a very strange bug. The game like reloaded itself and went back in time. Oh my god, what's this Inca? Nice to meet you, Inca. Wow, it's such a pleasure. Oh, hey, would anyone like to buy some of my horses, by the way? What's that you would for 300 gold? Oh, thank you. That's almost exactly as much gold as I need to buy a horse unit. I don't believe you. I didn't reload far enough back to be able to convert this city. God damn it. I'm going to have to go back like two more turns. Listen, it's just a little save scum. It's still good. It's still good. So I think I have a very clear plan in mind here. Get a golden age. Become a Giga Chad. Whether or not that works. Well, <laughs> we're soon to find out. You know, sometimes I feel like Doctor Strange when I when I have to do a reload in order to make a game go from being like, this is like a good game to this game is God tier. You know, I, I've reloaded 400,000 different turns and we only get a golden age in one of them. <laughs> All right, boom. There's the horseman for the plus one era score. Now, I happen to know that Chinguetti is like over here. I convert this city. We just need the one era score and we have manipulated the game into getting us a golden age. Listen, I'm a little forgetful, okay? The occasional reload to fix a mistake, not the end of the world. Play the game your own way. The challenge wasn't... <laughs> the challenge wasn't to do the challenge without reloading. The challenge <laughs> was, to, was to win a domination on a desert map, okay? We're in the setup phase, baby. Right, let's buy the volcano tile. We slap down a farm. We're one era score to go. Boosh. Thank you. Wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome to the heroic age. The heroic age where the ashes of this Canadian empire will rise into something that resembles a real, <laughs> a real and true empire. There we go. The world enters the medieval era. We're in a heroic age. It cost me nearly everything to get to this point. But my goodness, was it worth it? Let's go ahead and grab monumentality. We'll grab Exodus the Evangelists. And then I think we're also going to grab Free Inquiry because we plan to build commercial hubs. Or at least we will have a commercial hub to get the benefit from this. Whereas this is like just a little bit of culture. 
Although then again, how important is culture? Culture is really, really good. But it's not that good because I'm going to get culture from trading with city-states. Right. Hello, delicious oasis with culture and gold on it. Now, we're still not ready to settle because we still have to finish this commercial hub. And then we have to pick up the ancestral hall. So we're not quite there yet. But we are getting there. That's the important thing. I may actually faith purchase a single builder here. Because there's like tile, tile to improve. And we could start to at least get the, the settlers into position. Right, urban planning plus builder production. Well, I plan to, well, I think I go urban planning with colonization because the second I finish Ancestral Hall, the city will be cranking settlers as well as buying them with faith. We just go for mass settlements. My cities don't have to be good. They just have to build a holy site in order to be able to do literally anything. I'm going to start thinking about how we're going to settle. Volcanoes are like prime settlement targets because a single volcano can support two cities. Like if I settle here, a couple of oasis tiles as well, and a decent holy site or two. We don't want to put much infrastructure around the volcano with the exception of farms, because they're just like fairly cheap and replaceable. And ideally, I don't want to settle within two tiles of a volcano because we're on level four apocalypse mode or level four, what's the word? <laughs> Disaster intensity, which means volcanoes can do damage to tiles two tiles away from them. Start faith purchasing those settler boys to send out into the world. We should totally think about Petra, by the way. Once we have apprenticeship, we can move on to Petra. And I might go for Petra in my capital city. So then my capital is like a powerhouse that can actually really crank out settlers. We got the commercial hub finished. And the reason we finished that commercial hub is because it's worth six gold per turn, but also six science per turn. And now I just need to save up 480 gold and I can grab myself another trade route apprenticeship is a massive leap forward for us now our desert hills are three production that is a huge huge push at the very least i should pick up military tradition for flanking and support bonuses I'm not going to make that mistake again chinguetti would be amazing if i could get control of them but it's unlikely so instead maybe i'll just grab nagazagargu gargu get the suzerty of these guys and see what we can make out of that play literally can't say their name Hey, the world has reoriented itself and put the seam that I talked about here in the center of the map. There you go. Never doubt me. Always telling the truth. Always above board. <laughs> Except for when I'm not. Australia. Pleasure to meet you. Another Civ who's here to completely ruin my day, as is Babylon. Let's take a look at these numbers. Ooh, baby. These guys are scary. God, look at these cities that they have. They're just... They have cities everywhere. They have so many compared to me. No! No! Where is it coming from? Ah, uh, if he pillages it, it's going to be such a delay on my build. I need to like try and bait him with a builder. Uh, I've got vulnerable settlers sitting out in the open in the name of this build. I had to spend my money I was saving up to. Oh man, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't pillage. The old builder bait worked once again like a charm. Petra's available, but it's being delayed. Oh, I don't like the delayed Petra. Delayed Petra is a sad Petra. If I can get Petra, I think I win the game. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just win the game. Like if it, if it is all possible, it is the one Hail Mary that I've got up my sleeve. I've got settlers sitting here waiting for Ancestral Hall to finish so I can get my free builders. It's really quite demoralizing. Man at Arms dealt with in the capital. We still have two archers there to defend. We've got a new Man at Arms threat. We're about to finish Ancestral Hall. This horseman may die, but he's dying in the cause of protecting the city. And so it is a worthy cause. Die in service of your empire. The old lie. Here we go. Ancestral Hall finishes. We can immediately crack down these cities. Probably not the best place to put this city, but it's an acceptable place in my mind. Now with the Ancestral Hall complete, we're going to go for the Petra. It's a 21 turn Petra. Let's make sure we unlock all the tiles so that we can focus entirely on production, even at the loss of population. If Magnus is how we get all of our population and citizens and growth. Pingala is how we get into the late game. And we'll put Pingala in Winnipeg. And this city will be dedicated to the generation of science and culture. So it'll probably go like Holy Site, into Commercial Hub, into Campus, into Theatre Square. It's just going to be dedicated to the production of science and culture. And that's what this city is specialized for. Crack down another city. We do not need to improve those sheep. Living in the desert is a difficult life, but if we can manage it, our empire will become immortal. I think it would be a good idea to pick up Niter. That's another tile that we could theoretically improve. 
14 turn Petra. God, this is such a game changer if I can get it. It's actually, <laughs> oh, please, please, for the love of all that is good in the world, let me get this Petra. I'm begging with you, save gods. Smile upon me. Give me your aid. Anything I can sell? Just got to be selling everything on cooldown. And I can finally afford to get a market next turn. Good, good, good. We have a governor title. I'm going to pick up connoisseur, of course, naturally. We want that nice culture coming from this city. Plus, this is a great location for culture in general because of the way that it is. I think we will, we will accept the downside of settling adjacent to a volcano. I think we do. I think it is necessary for us to do so. I'm going to vote that down <laughs> just because I don't want to go to war with Arabia. Listen, they're my closest neighbor and they're quite literally quadrupled my science. You tell me if that sounds like a good war target. Why, yes, Potato, that sounds like the best war idea imaginable. Uh, the timing on this might not land. The fact that he's damaged might save me from the one shot. That's the only thing I have going for me here is that that, that man at arm is damaged and that might save me from him one shotting my archer because he has the military advisory giving him plus five combat strength, which is going to absolutely slap me for damage. Then again, he might not choose to attack me. Oh, he chose. He chose to attack. Settle that city. Look at that. I literally survived on one health. I would have died if he didn't have minus one uh, health from being a damaged unit. I would have literally died. And this city would have been just wiped off the face of the planet. This is a very, very old style that I used to play around the game's launch where you would go naked districts, uh, which basically means you don't build a monument. And I think in this scenario, I do think that naked districts is the correct play because that's how I feed these cities, is going naked districts. In particular, the holy site. Right, we have the cash, we pop in here, we grab ourselves a trader. And this is where the snowball of our economy actually really begins to happen. Because now I can come into Winnipeg, trade with my capital city, get five food, three production for this trade route. Boosh. That five food and three production will allow this city to grow and actually work some tiles. We bring over a couple of build charges, improve a couple of mines. And then once the city has a holy site and a commercial hub up and a little bit of infrastructure, it'll be able to get its own trade route to send to another city. Then that city will get a trade route to send to another city. I'll be able to continuously build settlers, train stuff and do all sorts of things and build just a really, really epic empire. All off of the back of chaining trade routes together. Right, happy days. We can start laying down farms here. And you might be saying like, potato, farms around a volcano? Why wouldn't you put mines here? It's because I just, I just need production. I, or I need food rather. The, the food is the problem. <laughs> I got no food. Yeah, this is our last settler purchase for the era. So I would say that's a pretty successful era. We got a whole, we got one, two, three cities out, four cities out in this era from Faith. And we're about to finish a Petra as well. I'd call that a successful era. I also just placed my diplomatic quarter. And that's for a very particular reason. It means that any trade routes to my capital will have another plus one food and plus one production. So that'll be six food, four production. And um, plus the diplomatic quarter is also just useful for generating more envoys. Petra, please, 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 please. Let me finish the Petra. There we go. Two food, two gold and one production on all desert tiles. This is the saving grace of my empire. This challenge just went from difficult to nigh impossible, to potentially doable. Not necessarily guaranteed that we can do it, but now it's like on, it's on the table. It's on the cards. Ooh, we actually did manage to secure another golden age. That's huge. That's a big deal. Construction boosted, so we have access to lumber mills, which is completely useless on this map, I might add. Promote Pingala to researcher. Now we're now we're cooking with diesel, right? We've got something going on here in Winnipeg in terms of the science and culture front that might allow us to just barely eke out maybe a long-term chance in this game. Maybe. In order to continue to develop Winnipeg, we like, like we're working four tiles right now and the city will grow to six tiles pretty comfortably. So I need one more build charge in here in order to improve this tile because that is six workable tiles in the city. So a builder charge in here would be a really, really ideal pickup. So I'll go ahead and grab myself a builder. The question is, do I continue to grow the city or do I stop off and get my commercial hub or do I pick up essentials like monuments and granaries and water mills and stuff? I don't think, a, I think a water mill, a granary monument are all very useful in the city, but I think a builder will help the city reach its actual potential. And then a commercial, so a builder into a commercial hub, I think is the right play. As much as I want to go temple into Gurdwara, that's really only available for my capital city to do. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase the temple. 
that'll give the city even more housing, even more growth. And then I will faith purchase a Gurdwara at some point when these settlers are finished. Golden age. It's a golden age. Welcome to the next age. This time we will only be able to take monumentality, which is pretty sad to go from like a super uber golden age to just a monumentality golden age. It's still pretty damn good though. We'll drop discipline. We'll plug in retainers. I'd love to use colonization right now, but I think I need to keep serfdom in. The lack of monuments really crushes me here. But if I really do think about it, a 50% boost to this city's production outmatches a plus one production boost to all of these other cities. So I will go ahead and drop urban planning and instead plug in colonization. If Colosseum hasn't been built, by the way, I will go ahead, drop down an entertainment complex and go for Colosseum in the near future. Just because there are literally no amenities on this map. And this would be the only way for me to get amenities to all of these cities. <laughs> there are no amenities on this map, which kind of makes me need to get control of Cahokia, realistically. The reason being is that Cahokia mounds can be built in desert and they give you plus three gold as well as plus one amenity. And you can get a second amenity when you have natural history. So that's two amenities per city across my empire for two build charges per city. That's a pretty damn good deal. So I think Cahokia is going to be one of the critical, like I'm, I'm trying to like figure out and identify which of these city states are super important. And while Kamasi is nice for this really, really nice culture trade route, I think Cahokia is just like necessary tier one, absolutely must have Cahokia. Ironworking boosted, getting us a nice another envoy. So a lot of people want a encampment. While the city will be extremely vulnerable to this volcano, I still think this is the right choice because there isn't really a better city location that can make use of this chunk of land. So sometimes you have to settle these kind of crappy, weird cities in order to really take control of the game. And I think this is a similar kind of deal. There's a double volcano here. But if I pop a city right here, it grabs one, two, three, four oasis, plus a bunch of volcano tiles. I can kind of play it a little bit riskier with these later settled cities, I feel like. I can kind of get away with it because I'm not dependent on a large part of my economy to be coming from those cities. These are kind of augmenting my current economy. As much as I love this trade route to the Gazagargamu, oh God, I can never say it. Um, I really do need to put these trade routes for my internals. By running internal trade routes, I'll be able to scale up these fresh cities much faster. I mean, like, just look at my capital and then compare it to, like, Toronto. Two food surplus, three production. 13 food surplus, 41 production. Oh, sweet, merciful Christ. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, let's not, let's not, let's not have anything to do with that. We're going to need units to defend the city. There's no point even attempting to build walls in here because this is not going to happen in time. Um, but that city is like severely under threat. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, kind of scary, but a six food, four production trade route isn't too bad. <laughs> so how are we doing on the culture and science track? Well, I mean, on the culture track... I am kind of beating a lot of the AIs. On the science track, however, I'm far behind. But I would be willing to bet that like city for city, my cities are of a higher quality than the AIs right now. They still got a bit of work to do. But I mean, would you really want a one population Sydney versus like a four pop Toronto that's on its way to become a real meaningful city? I think the choice is pretty clear to me. At least for what I would pick. I don't know. Maybe you have a different value system. Maybe you like one pop desert cities that have absolutely no production or growth. But as it stands, I'm feeling pretty all right. Colosseum will be huge for us because that's going to give us uh, plus two amenities and plus two culture in all of the cities that it touches. And I think, I think it touches around five cities based on the city overlap panel. So that's 10 amenities across my empire in a game where amenities are a little scarce. Not too bad. <gasps> Somebody took the Colosseum. No. That's devastating. I can't believe it. <sighs> the Colosseum was taken. And I got it pretty re I got it pretty quick too. And there's nothing really in here that I can justify. I'm going to get a economic alliance with Mansa Musa in the hopes that he will trade me lots of gold. And then I can use spies to steal his gold. That's kind of like the long-term play I'm looking for here is to just become a leech suckling 
at the Maui and Gold Income. Leech Tato McWhiskey era is a reborn <laughs> and we shall leech our way to victory. We shall become the greatest bloodsucker the world has ever seen. We have just found nitre, which will give us another tile in our empire that is actually useful. And there should be a few of these nitre tiles scattered around the map for us to pick up. Remember, when we're in such a low economy a game, a single tile is a significant upgrade. Like a, like a, a very significant upgrade. I'm definitely bottom of the barrel, but I'm only five techs behind Egypt. And if we compare that to Babylon, oh God, I'm 13 techs behind and I'm a half, like half a science. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. Like you have no idea the difference having a three food, three production tile makes to a city. Like, yeah, I don't think you can really appreciate it. When you're this starved for food and production, a tile like that is a game changer. He settled Jenny literally where I was going to settle. That is a sneaky little sausage of a man that he has become. You got to respect the AI when they make devious little plays like that. But I can do a counter devious play and buy all the good nearby tiles. So that's a big yoink arena for me. I think at this phase of the game now, it might be worth to go commercial hub first in some of these cities so I can get more trade routes faster. We've also now finally unlocked Merchant Republic. So this will be a nice gold upgrade. We are going to switch to Merchant Republic and this will cause a few ripples of changes. I really do want urban planning plugged in. And then I think I keep retainers. Some of my cities are starting to hit the critical point where they can place a third district. And I need to make some difficult choices about what I'm actually going to do in order to get that third district. I think a lot of my culture is going to be coming from trading with city states in the next while. Once I have diplomatic service, I think I'm going to be uh, switching to mostly international trade with city states to gain culture and gold. So I think of the vast majority of my cities are going to be throwing down just like whatever is a convenient campus. And I think that is the next big step forward for me is just a whole bunch of campuses. My civilization has become the largest in the world with at least three more cities than its next biggest rival. Having a large empire doesn't necessarily translate into, wait, oh, you can't build mines on floodplains, so if iron spawns on floodplains, you can't actually use it. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, there's a fun little interaction that I never knew about. I say it, it's a fun interaction. It's very much so a not fun interaction because it means now I don't get to use it. I would definitely say we're beginning to head into the mid late game of this build. So the question is kind of starting to become relevant to, is, OK, We've managed to establish a really big empire. We've got a really, really strong capital. We've got like a whole bunch of things going in our favor. How the hell are we going to win this game? Who the hell is our first target? And like, what's the actual late game plan here for going for a domination victory? Because there is a ticking time bomb here. People are going to start going for culture victories, for science victories, for domination, less so religion and diplomacy. But the, the time bomb here of culture and science is something I need to keep in mind. I initially just came into this game with the plan of like, how the hell do I make really, really good cities? And I feel like I've pretty effectively accomplished that, right? I've got cities that are essentially thriving in the desert. I think the next phase of the game is to get my science and culture up significantly and to get my gold income up and to focus a little bit less on faith income as a priority. But I think I also in the next era, I'm going to be looking to do as many of these missions as possible. Now, unfortunately, a lot of these city states are looking for trade routes which I haven't been able to fulfill yet. However, in the next era, once I have Vissel Banking, it will be totally, totally viable for me to hit those trade route uh, goals. And I reckon the easiest way for me to get a victory here is to go for some sort of air aircraft play. So possibly top half of the tech tree is how we're going to have to do this. I'm really not sure if there is a viable way to approach this game, except in the way that I approach it. I would be really curious to see if anyone else could do this more efficiently than I could or, or with a build that I hadn't thought of. I've got three envoys to spend and I would like to retain Susan Tree of Kumasi. That one's relatively important to me. I think Susan Tree of Cahokia and Kumasi are, are both quite critical to me this game. I can't really think of another city-state. Maybe Lahore in the late game for Nihang support. There's something to be said for putting another point into Nazca in order to generate more faith. About to finish the Grand Master's Chapel, which means we can now faith purchase units, which gives us something to do with our faith in the meantime. Um, but we are one promotion away from having Divine Architect as well. However, I am going to be getting my spy because stealing gold from Mali will be incredibly useful. But otherwise, my empire is developing essentially how I would like it to. Extremely slowly, but extremely powerfully. So I need my alliance with Mansa Musa to go away now, now that I have spies and I can start spy stealing from him. 
we're just about to break the 58 science mark, which is starting to be in the ballpark of where a lot of the AIs are. The problem is two of the absolute strongest sieves in the game are right on my border, Mali and Babylon. And then the other one, I guess, is also Arabia, who's also just insane right now. So normally you would have the juicy underbelly, the easy sieves that you could chip away at and build up your power. But I'm going to have to deal with the strongest sieves first, which makes this game a bit of uphill downhill. So like that first war is going to be an absolute horrendous experience. But every war after that should relax quite a bit. I like the fact that everyone in the map is like super happy to see me. They're like, oh yeah, let's be friends. When they really don't know the level of destruction and warfare that's coming their way. Actual amenities. Oh my God. Real existing amenities. Amber. We've got amber. We've got horses. There's real terrain here that we can make use of. Incredible. We have quested for the beautiful new lands to our east and we have found something useful. Although I think this crossbowman's dead. I think I'm going to pop off all this Diplo favor. I think I won an aid request. So I wonder if I can get like a really good deal on it. 2,100 gold from his capital. I'm going to be able to steal so much money from the Malian Empire. Now I need to make sure I never get a friendship with him again. As nice as he is, he's a nice guy. I like him a lot. But we can never, ever have a friendship with him. And now is the time I start trading with city-states. It's two food, two production, a little bit of money and a little bit of culture. It's not as good as trading with my capital in terms of raw yields. But the golden culture is going to be really helpful now that I'm scaling up my tech economy, right? Culture, science, that all needs to scale up. I did my best to ramp up the total amount of the total amount of, you know, food and production and stuff like that. But now we need to push beyond our limits, the limitations of our minds. We need to let our dreams be memes and our memes be dreams. We need to dream of memes and electric sheep. Right, we have a little bit of a problem here. And by a little bit of a problem, I mean we have an absolutely massive problem that I have no idea how to deal with. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff. Where is this coming from? It's coming from there, right. Uh, okay. I don't really have anything that can respond to that. So we won the aid request and we can fire off all of this... Diplo favor for a thousand gold and this might make a difference. I hate it when this happens. When things are going really, really well and then the game just decides to throw a spanner into the works. We're slowly clearing out the barbs here using very careful crossbow positioning. We're taking a bit of damage on our cities. But more or less I feel like we've stabilized against the barbarian hordes. Uh, just to put things into perspective, it's about turn 200, turn 199. And uh, we have just broken the 80 science mark. Well done, everyone. Well done. Give everyone a round of applause. We have a pretty respectable empire. We've got really good gold, decent faith. Our science has started to come online. We're building campuses. We've got some universities going. And I am really quite certain we might be able to put this challenge to bed. Now, <laughs> this is the easy version of the challenge. The hard version of the challenge is no rivers, no volcanoes, no oases. Now, what could we pull off in that circumstance? Well, <laughs> we'd have to see, won't we? I think we did. Yeah, we managed to gain sources, so it's time to start stealing cash in here. And look how much cash he's making. All of that money will be mine. Let's get that trade route with Kumasi from my capital. Look at these capital trade routes, man. 10 gold, 15 culture. These are serious yields. Actually, my only, uh, my only knowledge of the city of Sherbrooke uh, in pop culture is that there's a, there's a sea shanty. I think it's a uh, Barrett's Privateers. And one of the one of the verses is, oh, how I wish I was in Sherb or I wish I was in Sherbrooke now or something like that. It's a good LC shanty. I, I'm, a, I'm a, you know what? I'm a man who particularly likes a sea, a sea shanty from time to time. First spy steal went off without a hitch and we picked up 2,168 gold. Go ahead and take yourself a disguise promotion there. Well done, Samuel. You did a great job. Do you know what? I actually, I really liked in Humankind... Where if you had units on either side of a unit, you would get extra bonus damage. I reckon that should be in Civ 6. Whereas if you have a unit on each side of a unit, that should give you like a double bonus to your flank. Like it should be plus 
for flanking for having a unit specifically on the opposite side I don't know I think it's a cool little mechanic it would make cavalry uh, interesting for flanking around infantry it would make positioning more meaningful I, I think that as a mechanic was, was quite well done in humankind and I'd like to see it return I know that that bonus is technically simulated by things that give you uh, double flanking bonuses or whatever I, I guess it's technically simulated by that but I, I'd like it, you know, a little bit more explicit would be kind of fun, in my opinion. Industrialization. We now have access to coal, as well as an extra plus one production on our mine improvements, which is very nice. We also have access to the factory and the coal power plant, and we will definitely be making use of those. We also have nationalism, which allows us to combine our units together into cores, giving us plus 10 combat strength, plus 10 combat strength, roughly increasing the damage you deal by 50%, just to put that in perspective. Quite quite good so our theoretical power level of a lot of our units just went up significantly uh, these guys went from 30 40 to 40 50 and these guys went to 65 combat strength I, you know just to kind of again to put that in perspective just a little bit of perspective right we're looking at muskman 55 combat strength line infantry 65 so it's the same as getting a tech level upgrade essentially let's go for heartbeat of steam this is probably the best way that we're going to get era score um, is building industrial era buildings. Now, Moksha is established. Let's go ahead and faith purchase the holy site. Will gold purchase the granary? Um, where's my nearest holy site? It's over here. I shall go ahead and grab myself a... Oh, I don't have the faith. I used all my faith. Well, never mind. I'll get a missionary here in the very, very near future. But the great thing is, is I can absolutely boost this city to a very, very high degree. And once it gets converted, um, that'll be even better. With industrialization comes the realization that we need to move on. We need to keep on clapping those technological cheeks and make our way towards flight. And we are a mere three techs away from being able to throw down aerodromes and start the airplane-based infrastructure. We stole ourselves another 2,000 gold. Things are looking fantastic on that front. We are about to get our factory. In fact, I might purchase the factory just because this is literally so much production it's actually kind of absurd how much production this factory is going to give me like six production in these surrounding cities is half their current production insane we purchase the factory then we get to work at the coal power plant like the city just has so much more production now it's <laughs> i can't believe factories are actually the meta on the desert oh wait i can actually just buy the coal power plant as well yeah then plus six production immediately in all of these cities. Amazing. We can go back to making settlers to try and even out whatever kind of crazy world that we live in. Why? Why are you here? Get out of here. Go away. Stop harassing my cities. I'm tired of barbs, dude. I'm sick of barbs. I should have... Well, I actually... I think turning barbs on helped me more than it hurt... hurt me because the AI has a harder time dealing with barbarians. So that, if you want to make this challenge even harder for yourself, go ahead and turn barbs off and see how well you do then. It has been 22 turns. 25 turns. Since I gave you the 200, turn 200 update. We're at 118 signs per turn. Our empire continues to eke along a very meagre and painful existence. However, Moksha has been running around and finishing districts for me which has also been allowing me to buy things like markets to get more trade routes, which lets me get more gold, but lets me get more, like it's, it's a, it's a, it's a snowball thing where, where we have, you know, it's happening. I have an economy now, but I genuinely don't have an explanation to you as to how I've managed to make an economy in the desert, but it exists. We have a build. Are we still bottom science? No, we are no longer bottom science. We are currently beating Gilgamesh, India, our Urganti, Hammurabi, although he's special, he has half sides. We're beating Australia. Culturally, I feel like we're in a significant position. We're, we're not at the bottom. We're not at the top, but we're not at the bottom either. I would say we're, we're in like the mid-tier the mid -tier culture stage. Uh, Nubia is a big problem. She has 13 technologies on me. I'm still about 5 to 10 techs behind the AI on average. Make our way to advanced flight. We'll clean up a lot of these older techs. I'm going to pick up printing for diplomatic visibility. We'll start to pump out bombers. Hopefully I hit aluminium. If I don't hit aluminium, I'm going to cry myself to sleep. That is a Potato McWhiskey promise to you, the viewer, that I will cry. 
on well probably not on camera because i'll be asleep what am i doing with my life why am i here why what why am i doing this challenge there are moments in life that you just you 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 zoom out of your very little narrow perspective and you realize that you spent the last four hours trying to turn the desert in Civ 6 into a hospitable home and I don't really have an explanation as to why I've done this. I cannot explain it to you, but here I am, doing it anyway. The thin wedge of my sanity that remains would like you to know that I have reclined my chair back as far as it goes and thankfully my microphone, I'm a good four feet away from my monitor because I'm, qu I'm quite a tall man so when I lean back I'm, my head is quite far away. Hold on. Let me actually, let me quickly draw you how I am sitting. So we've got the desk. That's the desk right there. And it's got like a little computer monitor arm thing that has my computer monitors. My monitors are here. Okay, there's my keyboard. There's my mouse. Here's my hand on both. And I am really, really far back. Like I'm talking like I'm here. And... Believe it or not, I, I this is absolutely not the scale, by the way. <laughs> this is not the scale. I've got a chair here, okay, that goes under and through my desk. And I am also on a chair that is nearly horizontal. So, we're practic- I'm actually lying down making this video right now, just to give you an idea, okay? Thought you could use that update. This has worn me down to the point where I actually have to recline as I play to maintain my sanity. Although it is a little bit of an awkward position for my neck, I will say that. Um, so I don't know how, how sustainable this position is, but God damn it, I, am I in this position now and I'm not changing because I just got comfortable. I feel like I'm a cat sometimes. What is going on in your empire? Why are you, you so much money? Just out of curiosity, has anyone started the science race? Nobody has spaceports yet, so we're not under threat. We still have time. <laughs> we're gonna make it boys we're gonna make it let's make sure we're trading with Hunza to grab that envoy we want to get those envoys as a as a major priority every envoy we have in here is a step closer to Susan tree of a city state that could be really important for us there we go we have access to flight that's perfect we will be building a few hangars around mostly in our capital is where we would like to get one, but we do need a little bit more population room. Yeah, we throw down a neighborhood, get that done real quick. Once we have flight, we want to build up our aerodromes and our hangars. Then we want to unlock aluminium so that we can have the resources we need for bombers. And then I think bombers is going to be the trigger. Uh, fighters and bombers are going to be the thing that we use to go to war. Now, the unfortunate thing is we are also going to want an encampment with an armory in it. And I don't think we have an encampment with an armory unit because we really want military engineers to make airports or uh, airstrips. So that's going to be part of the plan here as well. Because this is the Victor City, and so ideally I'd like get 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 Embrasure here and start spawning units from that city with gold and faith. And then that should be the thing that I use to kill Arabia. Because if I can kill Arabia, I can kill anyone on this map. We've got our first neighborhood district for plus two era score. And the city of Ottawa is now growing at a reasonable pace. We went from positive seven food to positive 27 food. The city of Montreal isn't looking great. I'm going to be honest with you. At least it has walls. <laughs> I don't know how much that's going to help though. Oh, Jesus. Now that we have mass media, we can make our way towards mobilization, ideology, and then eventually... We might go for fascism here. Plus five combat strength on every unit does make your life a lot easier, but the extra food and production from trading with city-states is also really nice. I don't know, I'll have to think about it for a while. The siege of Montreal is becoming ever slowly more dangerous. This is the moment of truth. This is where, where I discover if I've won or lost is how much aluminium I have. Well, at least I have one copy of aluminium there's one over here that should be fairly easy to improve i do have a builder in the area to head over there i've got another copy in my capital already online i've got a copy over here that's brilliant i even have a builder on the way i got very very lucky oh and i've got one here this is less lucky because there's no builder in the area there is one kind of relatively close who can make his way over but all things told four copies of our uh, aluminium um or uh, aluminum that's going to be what eight bombers uh, potentially six bombers, two fighters. They'll be added to research management into that equation. We could even spend a little bit of our aluminium 
on maybe some helicopter units in the super late game. Australia has a little bit of oil. I just need like 10 oil off you. Thank you, good sir. So I will be able to boost advanced flight and get my war machine ripping and roaring a few turns early. City of Brantford is going to be the main production location for a vast majority of my units. So I definitely want to get a trade route here if I can get one. But more importantly, I want to get a barracks and an armory because this is where I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be producing my knee hangs from Brantford. So I want them to be popping out with that plus one promotion. And then what I can do is, depending on how I feel, I could either, uh, I could give them two different promotions and then have double promoted knee hangs coming out the coming out the gate. Winnipeg has finished its hangar. Let's go ahead and purchase the hangar so that we can get those two fighters. Although they'll be starting as biplanes, but if I buy two biplanes, that should knock five turns off advanced flight and I'll be able to go straight into fighters. So these biplanes are gonna be, be the scouts and bombers. I completely forgot that I had Moksha and that I had put him here specifically to uh, purchase districts because I'm a dumbass, but there it is. I got two districts in here. I take these two knee hangs and I combine them together and the two promotions get combined into a single unit. It's a very cool little trick you can do. I definitely recommend it. Um, just something you should consider rolling around in the little noggin of yours. The little scoop of grey matter that you call a brain. To be honest with you, I'm not the most comfortable uh, <laughs> with the idea of brain matter being con compared to ice cream, but you know that's kind of that's the phase of the game we're at. Okay, we're in the we're in the one video giga churn where we're deep into the late game. The moment of truth is here. Welcome to airports and advanced flight, as well as mobilization, allowing me to combine more units together. This is a huge power spike for me now. I can pop in here and go ahead and gold purchase a few of these bombers. In for a penny, in for a pound. If I thought about things a little bit more carefully, I would have had more bombers, but we we make decent cash, so I'll make do with what we make here. The same turn we get access to bombers, we have three of them ready. So this gives us a massive power spike. If we can start hitting uh, Arabia with these bombers, I think we can take the city. Now, the main thing that we lack is the military engineer support. So I'll, I'll get a couple of military engineers, build some railroads down to Sherbrooke, get a couple of those airports. I'll need knee hangs as well. I'm gonna send a couple of these knee hangs to the east to defend Peterborough and Stratford because it does look like there's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a battle lining up over there. You take a look at this biplane attacking an infantry and he does decent damage, but if I upgrade him to a fighter where we do have spare aluminium, Look at that. So fighters are your unit killers and then bombers are your city and infrastructure killers. I'm going to start training some heavy cavalry in my capital. This will eventually form the backbone of my ground army. Oh, and I should have purchased an airport before I purchased all my bombers. That would have been a good upgrade, wouldn't it have been? Yeah, another 50% air combat experience for this, for units built in the city. Let's also sell off a bunch of our strategic resources before we go to war. I think that's going to be a necessary part is just cleaning out the AI of all their gold. And since we're also going to be generating uh, massive amounts of negative diplomatic favor, it's time to sell off all the diplo favor that we do have. The first bombers are arriving at the new front line in addition to a fighter support vehicle. Now, not all of these bombers are going to be able to reach the front line and actually participate, but that's not important. What is important is that we denounce Arabia and maybe declare a protectorate war next turn because I believe Arabia is at war with one of my city-states. Right Arabia it's time for you to meet your maker. Protectorate war. Now real quick Gilgamesh how would you like to get a military alliance? Gilgamesh is in baby. Uh, now Gilgamesh how would you like to do a joint war on Saladin? Oh, you would love that. Absolutely brilliant. That's going to get me an extra plus five combat strength. Having a military ally is very, very powerful because you get that plus five combat strength against your enemy. That is a majestic day. And the cities of Arabia fall relatively quickly, relatively quickly beneath the wings of my aircraft. Three attacks in one turn and Baghdad's almost down. Let's drop an airstrip right here now that we have a knee hang to defend it. And then any bombers that aren't in range of my enemy cities can use this airport to actually get damage in. Although it looks like we're in relatively good shape on that front. Baghdad, Yoink, Reno, that's amazing. And so the conquest of the world has finally begun. Take that spiffing Brit. You thought it couldn't be done. I have taken a single victory and therefore I declare myself the victor of the entire game.
What's next, you ask? Well, we've got to kill the rest of the Arabian cities. Most importantly, we've got to find their capital somewhere in this juicy area. Now, of course, Baghdad has flipped back independent, but that's not important. What's important is we managed to bro break it. All we need to do is make sure all of these cities are absolutely completely softened up so we can take them all out in one fell swoop. Welcome to the heroic age. Everything is starting to line up for us. We've got our aircraft. We've got our golden age. We're moments from getting our tier three encampment building. Moments from having those juicy knee hangs in our grasp. And then moments from having those juicy tanks in our grasp. What better way to celebrate than with a heroic age? We'll grab ourselves two arms, heartbeat of steam and bodyguard of lies. More production, more science, more less grievances and more war production and then faster spy actions to fuel our gold income. Baghdad will be mine once again. We take out the city. Now the population in Baghdad is pretty bad but there's the boost for military science. We come here to Brantford and we go ahead and we buy ourselves a military academy. No, it looks like it's just land military units that are cheaper. But thankfully Nagazgar Mugamu actually works on knee hangs. So now we can buy knee hangs Ni hang armies every nearly every single turn for 470 faith. That's an 87 combat strength unit basically for free every two turns. My military capabilities now are nearly unstoppable. Medina has fallen. The entire world quakes and the sand ripples as the Canadian monster is unleashed. For thousands of years, perhaps only hundreds because Canada is a relatively new country, we have hidden behind our politeness and agreeableness. But in reality, we have been lying in wait to strike at the world and take it over for ourselves. To break the old orders, to break the bonds of <laughs> desert subsistence. You cannot stop me. Your units are like leaves in the wind before the marching of my military. Cairo has crumbled. Wait. No! Why would you go into the water? No! <laughs> Why would you do this? Okay, Cairo has crumbled, is what I was going to say. <laughs> Why would he go in the water? It was because there was a builder in the way. In the wake of the breakdown of social order, Canada turns to the only thing they know to solve the problem. Fascism. Fascism will give us a plus five combat strength in all of our units, and it'll also reduce our war weariness by 15%. The plus 50% production bonus towards units is also really helpful. More importantly though, we will have access to four military policy slots. And by plugging in martial law with propaganda, alongside the inherent 15% war weariness reduction, we'll have a total 65% war weariness reduction. Meaning we'll be able to stay at war for basically the rest of the game and suffer almost no consequences. It's not all sunshine and roses in fascist Canada, however, we still do have to break through and kill a bunch of our enemies. Damietta falls with ease. I think I will take out Sana'a and Aden and then get to work on India and Sumeria. Number, public enemy number one, however, is Nubia because they're the only people who have actually started a scientific uh, escape project. And yes, they are going to have to escape this world if they're really going to survive. I've taken Arabia's last viable city. The only thing left is Homs and Barca. But I'm going to leave those cities in place for a very simple reason. If I completely kill Arabia, I'll get a massive amount of negative grievances with the entire world which in turn will make it really, really difficult to conquer everyone else's cities. But if I do it this way, I'm only ever occupying these cities and all the grievances I've generated are specifically against Arabia. So I never have to worry about, you know, paying off that grievance debt. And because I'm in a military golden age, I can actually declare wars as Canada without having to wait. You can see here, normally Canada can't declare war until five turns after they've denounced someone because I have the declare golden age policy, I could declare war right away. And so it is with the roar of aircraft that, ca that, that India meets its demise. Conquering Arabia nearly doubled my empire science per turn. That's because Arabia focused almost exclusively on building campuses. Jabalpur has fallen, now we move on to Patna. I actually, I this game is such a pain in my tits, dude, that I had to take a break, record an entire Japan playthrough, and then come back to this. I do remember that we had killed Delhi and that Sumeria was next. God, all the Mali and modern armors. Okay, let's get it. Let's get it underway. Now we have access to steel, finally giving us access to artillery, which are going to form a big part of our future army. I don't think that 
aircraft are going to be enough to win the game on their own. I am going to need a ground army. My Thor is a gunner, as is a gra forever. That is India, and now officially dead. They do have one city remaining, but do I really need to take that last city? No, no, I do not. What I really need to do is make, make my way towards Nubia. I don't know if the, can they win? They might be able to win in time. It depends on how long it takes me to kill uh, Sumeria and Egypt. Sweet, we finally have access to tanks, which will allow us to punch through our enemies. More importantly as well, actually, is that we are able to grab ourselves a supply convoy to act as a support unit for our armies. Let's head straight for jet bombers because that's going to be another 10 combat strength on our airplanes, which will keep us relevant into the late game. I'm curious to see if we do find any uranium, so I will quickly grab that and that might change how we fight. But we have finally built a war department in our capital city. Um, I think I might skip aerodrome and just start producing military units here. I could go for mounties, but I don't really have a place I can put national parks. As good as national parks are, I don't think that's the play here. Seven turns for a tank army, however, is a little bit more reasonable. But I think also I want some artillery armies as well. God, I love just how far units can move with railroads. There's a reason I spent all this time building them. It just lets you absolutely dash across the world. I take back everything bad I've ever said about railroads. I apologize to the rail companies. Peace with Arabia sounds good, especially if I'm getting a thousand gold on top. Borsipa has fallen. It belongs to me now. This is the first of the Babylonian cities, which is a nice step forward for the Canada desert only domination game. Now, in terms of loyalty, we're never holding these cities. Not until we break Durkar, Galzu and Ashuna and stuff. We have found at least one, possibly even two copies of uranium. Uh, one of them isn't improved, so we'll need a builder to sort that out. But otherwise, I mean, things are going pretty well. I also managed to get Georgi Zhukov. And on turn 278, I'm finally evangelizing my religion. Let's have a little bit of a look here, see what we could pick up. So we could we could get tithe. Tithe is a lot of money if I start spreading my religion as a pilgrimage. If I'm trying to think about what would actually really help me win the game. So my religion is giving me faith. It's giving me food. And it's giving me housing. Is there anything that's bottlenecking me? I don't need culture. I don't really need science. Crusade would be okay. Holy order is okay. You know, I'm just going to take itinerant preachers so that my religion spreads more easily. And then I'll yoink tithe because this will give me a way to convert faith into gold. Then once I launch an inquisition and I run down here and I start, you know, converting all these cities that I just took over, we'll start to see some dividends be paid out. The great thing about Ni Hangs in the late game is if you combine it with the martial law card, it's essentially just a four, five, four, 500 faith plus four loyalty in every city so it makes holding things really easily oh my god i actually messed up that entire sentence it's not 500 faith it's 600 faith and it makes holding cities really easy not easily jesus christ i'm genuinely shocked that the city of babylon has 15 population it probably has something to do with the babylonian palgum here this little building providing plus one food on all river tiles. I'm quite impressed that they've managed to pull that off. Considering the amount of work it was for me to get a 26 population capital, a fair play to the AI. Babylon's capital has fallen and it now belongs to me. Thank you. Should make my loyalty problem in these previous cities a little bit better. God, these aircraft are kind of disgusting. They just rip through. Babylon's main empire now belongs to me and we can get to work on Australia which will finally let us strike at the delicious underbelly of the Incans, who have actually managed to nearly complete the moon landing. There we have the humble jet bomber. And this actually comes at a very key time. We can take our time now. Just make sure we get every single one of these things boosted. Now, the important thing about a jet bomber is that it has five more range. And let me just go ahead and put that range in perspective. So this is the range of a normal jet bomber. You can just about see that if I put my finger on the city of Kar Shamash, a bomber station there could probably just about hit Mari. This is the range of a jet bomber. A jet bomber in Kar Shamash can hit all the way over to Medina, okay? I'm having trouble fitting both of these cities on my screen. That is just how far jet bombers can fly. And jet bombers are going to make the conquest here significantly easier. Just based on that range alone, because up until this point, I've had to build air bases to actually support my aircraft. So I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a lot less air bases from now on. 
I'll still need them because they're really good. And honestly, I've slowly gained more respect for a lot of the game mechanics I kind of ignored. Because while they don't necessarily... I, I used to optimize my gameplay for how long I was in the game, right? Like how many hours I was in the game. And so I would play in like a really sloppy and fast way. But I've realized there is another way to optimize. And that's where you optimize on a per turn basis, where you're trying to optimize how many turns it takes to win. And that's just something I never really prioritized. And I think if you're trying to optimize on a per turn win, you definitely, definitely, de definitely need to be building railroads and airstrips. Uh, so I think we do have enough uranium to maybe justify going for giant death robots. We also have the cash flow to maybe support a couple of those. On the other hand, we could just go for a nuclear program and this would significantly speed up the rate of conquest um, because we could just uh, nuke a city and then every time we nuke a city, uh, we just need to have enough tank armies to hit a city. We could just need to be, we just need to have enough tanks to burn um, our way through enemy empires. And I think that is a viable move forward for us. How the hell does a two-pop city have... 30 production. I guess if it's working enough food, that does kind of make sense <laughs> somehow. All righty then. Cass's belly declare a golden age war. Australia, it's your time to fall. Australia has zero military and their cities are not defended by walls. So this will actually just be the most crumbly of crumblings um, that you ever did see. Like it's taken me two to three shots per jet bomber to take down a city. Like, come on, this is this is a little nutty. All right, a little quirky, one might say. Like we took two cities on the first turn of the war. This is easy. Scratch that, three cities on the first turn of the war. Hello, thank you very much. Perth is also a goner. I managed to conquer Babylon and Australia in under 11 turns. We're getting there, boys. It's gonna happen. <laughs> We're gonna win. This is now an endurance challenge. Uh, slowly, I do feel, I, I feel my sanity slipping away from my grasp and, and, and you know, to be honest, it's somewhat comforting to know that it actually is something I can just give away, that there it's an option, that I can just no longer have sanity, that it can just leave me as I slowly but meticulously maneuver my armies around this world, this hellscape desert land, land world thing, uh, in an effort to appease the YouTube algorithm as I, as I self-harm via video games, uh, for the entertainment of others that is that is where my sanity went okay and it's never coming back it's all used up i've i've reached the point of recline very very early into this recording session my last one i got a good four hours in before i was nearly you know 90 degrees horizontal now oh baby we're like an hour and 15 minutes in and i am very slouched down in my chair do you know what makes it worse too it's really really warm in dublin and not just warm it's really really humid so i'm actually just sitting here sweating my bollocks off slowly conquering the world a horrifying desert world and a challenge i didn't even want to do oh he just declared war on me well that's nice a military emergency you say okay that's nice there's probably a point where i should start raising cities but i'm not about that life okay these cities are valuable to me <laughs> okay i like having a lot of cities right well there's no time like the present to get a war going uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves a builder in this city so we can get more aluminium. We come over to Brantford and we buy ourselves a couple of jet bombers. That'll be used against Mali. And maybe I'll get one of my fighters. Where's the nearest fighter? You. Could I get you to rebase your way over to the east so we can start fighting this nonsense? What if God played Civ? He'd be doing a crap job. Okay, denounce the Inca. Golden Age War. I just realized that I was muted for a huge section of this recording. I'm extremely sad. Um, but we have managed to take quite a few cities. We're pretty deep into Incan territory now and we're just about bordering uh, the Nubians. We've also managed to take a nice bite out of Mali. The first Malian city has fallen. Um, unfortunately, these cities are going to be starving. But I just had like a really, really cool idea. I was conquering all these Incan cities and watching all the, the Terrace Hill Farm things disappear. And uh, you know what I was thinking? It, it, it kind of sucks. When you kill an enemy Civ, all of their unique improvements and in infrastructure disappears. So I was thinking it would be really, really cool if every Civ in the game, like either A, if you conquer their city, you keep their old infrastructure. 
Like it just stays like, you know, if they have a unique theater square, it stays as their unique theater square. It doesn't get like auto changed or whatever. Like that, I thought that would be pretty cool. But you know what else I thought would be super cool? If you in fact like conquer another empire, I think their culture should stay around and you should get to pick like an aspect of their culture to either like add to your sieve or to like replace one of your abilities. So like, let's say I'm playing as Canada right now and I conquered Mali's, you know, capital city. Maybe I could replace ice hockey rings with their Sagubis ability. And that would be kind of a way where you can actually like, as you're conquering around the map, you like morph your sieve. Dude, this is such a cool idea. To where like you eventually you conquer enough sieves and you end up, ooh, they have jet fighters. They have jet fighters and they're attacking my jet bomber. So that's a problem. So I'm going to have to get my own jet fighters. And I'm also going to need to get some anti-aircraft guns. But they are really, really, really expensive. But yeah, he just killed a jet bomber with a single attack from a jet fighter. Which makes me feel like maybe I should promote these guys. So jet fighters have... Uh, damn, he did so much damage. But maybe if I kill the city of Sousa, the aircraft dies inside of it. I actually don't know how that works. I've never tested it. I go with my gut, not with my butt. And we make airplanes. Honestly, I don't even know. I don't even know why. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I've just, I've, I've lost it, bro. I'm done. I've lost my mind. It's too much work, okay? <laughs> this, is, this is too much work for one man. One man can't achieve this. I don't know how I'm going to feel when I win this game. Because like, if we take a look, okay. Uh, nobody's close to a culture victory. I'm halfway to a Dom victory. No one's close to a religion. No one's close to diplomacy. Like, this game has eaten so many hours of my life. How am I going to feel when I finish it? I don't know. Like my, I've got a 5,000 strong army. This game has been with me through like an emotional event. You know what I mean? Like this game is a friend. I'll be sad when it's gone. I think. No, no, I'll be glad. Fuck this game. Okay. This game in particular. This particular game of Civ, I hate it. All right. I know that was a quick 180, but uh, you know. Listen, I'm doing a bit, okay? I'm a bit guy. I'm not a Bitcoin guy. That's a different kind of guy. That's the kind that nobody wants to be the Bitcoin guy. Never be the Bitcoin guy. You could be the Dogecoin guy, because at least people are like at least the people who are the Dogecoin, they know it's a, like you know that's a meme. You know it's not going anywhere. Like you're not fooling anyone. Oh my god, you can clear barb camps with fighters? I never knew. <laughs> that's incredible. New tech discovered. And before the comments are like, oh, Potato discovers a new tech that we knew all along. You know what? Just eat an egg. That's what I say. I say you should go eat an egg. Not beat. Eat. Eat an egg. It's like the culinary version of touch grass, except you don't want people to go outside because outside is scary and warm. Or scary and cold. Depending on the place that you live, it could be either. I'll take peace with Babylon. I don't think I have a reason to quarrel with him anymore. He's basically dead. And I think similarly Australia is off my radar. He's down to his final city. We're officially in the info era. And I'm not happy about it at all. See, I'm in a very awkward position. Because I've spent the last few days working on this game. And I, I could theoretically, right? It's my right to just stop playing. How good is a free giant death robot with zero supporting technology versus getting a ton of aluminum and being able to crank out as many planes as I want? I feel like the free giant death robot is huge because the damage it can do to enemy cities is pretty worth. I am sentient meat torturing itself for the entertainment of other sentient meat. That is what I have become. That was my destiny all along. If you are also sentient meat, go ahead and leave a comment on this video. Why don't you drop a like on it too? Let's sentient meat work together to produce the most liked Civ 6 video. It's probably not going to be this video. Let's be real. I have denounced Nubia. I, had, I probably should have declared a golden age war on her, but I, I have her denounced so we can declare war on her in five turns. So I suppose in the five turns waiting time, we can continue to bomb the hell out of the Incans. My god, this city was so difficult to take. My game almost crashed while it was flipping. I'd say, you know, a city was big or I've had the game running too long. It could be either. I don't think I need thermo nukes, but there's no reason not to research them. All right, giant death robot, don't fail me now. 
awesome. It grabbed a city. Where the hell is his capital in this mess? Okay, the capital is over here at Niani. So we're going to be aiming to take this huge muscle of city, starting with Kumbi Saleh. One thing I kind of forgot about Mali is that it's the best target for any sort of pillaging acquisitions I want to do. So it'd probably be a good idea to make sure that I'm doing that. With the completion of the Manhattan Project, we have to make the decision about whether or not we want to go for Operation Ivy. It's probably reasonable because it's worth it to go for Operation Ivy if you think you can hit two cities with a single nuke. So I am going to start researching Operation Ivy and depending on the city, if it's like sub 15 turns for a nuclear device, I think I'm going to start building it. Now, if we think about what 15 turns is, Actually, it's about sub 20 turns. So if a city has about 40 production, I might start building nuclear devices. Otherwise, it takes a little bit too long and I'd probably be better off just making more modern armor. Let's declare a war of territorial expansion against Nubia. This will give us slightly less grievances than we would normally get. And it'll also open the gateway to the Nile. We will soon be knocking upon the borders of Egypt. But more importantly, I'm pretty sure Nubia is the person who is the most far along in the space race so they're just like the next target you, you like once you're established you take out the person who's closest to winning and you just follow that process until it's a logical conclusion all right let's go check out check out quasar ibrim i'm going to move all my modern tanks up but i'm going to be looking for pillages with these guys i think i've been under pillaging i think that's something you know you make mistakes okay you play a game for this long for this amount of time at this time of the year you get a little sloppy okay there is the juicy Nubian capital that we have been searching for. Long have we waited, much have we debated. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm going to need a break from Civ after playing this game. I'm, I just, I'll need a break. I'll need a break. It, this is, this is torture. <laughs> like the game is fun. Oh my God, though. This is weaponized. This is the game just... At its, I don't even want to use the word worst because the game is still fun and it's still like really damn good but it's like it's the game at its least <laughs> at its least like progress progressing like everything is just a, like every turn like the thing is a lot happens in every turn and a lot of it is meaningful it's just like I attack with an aircraft and then I attack with an aircraft and then I attack with an aircraft and then I attack with an aircraft. And then I attack with an aircraft. And then I... Oh, now I get to attack with a fighter! Let's see. Oh, little little man here. I attack with the fighter. I kill that man. Let's have a look. Oh, we got... We can pillage there. We pillage. We bring the drone over. The artillery can tap the city of Niani. Here's a fun challenge I just thought of. Uh, win a science victory without ever building a spaceport. You have to conquer it. Now there's a kind of neat idea. How do you guys feel about that one? We have taken Nubia's capital. It is mine. Not yours. Not theirs. It is mine. I'm actually generating 500 tourism per turn, but I have absolutely no idea where it's coming from. I think some of it is coming from like stolen great works that I yoinked from killing people or something. Because I haven't made any myself this game. We're dealing with a missile cruiser inside the city of Moreau, which is starting to shoot down my jet bombers. Now, it's not a big problem right now, but over time, these guys are going to take little chips of damage and I'll have to promote them. Just yet more ways the AI is trying to figure out how to slow me down. Nubia's capital has fallen to me and we continue east now onto Egypt. The city of Heh needs to die. I am going to go ahead and liberate Muscat because that's going to give me huge gold scaling, like almost 400 gold per turn. I probably should have also liberated Samarkand. I didn't think of it. I, I, like I just automatically captured it. But l honestly, liberating a city state like this is so huge for me right now. It gets me an insane amount of gold across my empire because my city, my empire is so huge. A single city state is worth so much because city states scale off your empire size. For one turn away from Niani flipping. Can the giant death robot turn it around? That should be yes. Yeah, okay. So killing one more city was what we needed to do there. And now we're fine. Uh, seven out of nine capitals. I just have to get Uruk. 
Uruk should be fairly straightforward. I remembered that I had faith and that I could buy units with faith. Listen, I let me. I have gone on a journey here, okay? But I remembered that I had faith and I can buy um, units with faith. So that's what I'm doing. I'm buying rocket artillery. I'm buying, um, you know, supply convoys. I'm buying, buying dr drones. Drones. And I'm going to form just uh, an omega formation of rocket artillery to just this whole place. And yes, that is what I said. Do I actually have any nukes yet? Oh. Oh, I have, I have 65,539 ivory. It appears we've had some, some integer rollover bug here because I can sell Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh, would you like to buy 65,000 ivory? Why, you would. You'll give me one gold for 65,000 ivory. Thank you so much, Gilgamesh. Hang on a minute. If we had duplicate luxuries provide extra amenities, and I had 65,000 copies of ivory, does that mean I get 65,000 amenities? Oh my god. We need to figure out what caused this rollover. If you know what caused this rollover, please send me an email, leave me a comment on this video. We have to figure out what causes this. Maybe it has something to do with like trading a resource when you conquer someone and then you end up with like an overflow amount of that resource. Or like you trade it away and then they get pillaged and so you end up with negative things. Ooh, that could be it. It would be something like that. Knowing how kooky games programming is and, you know, essentially it's like a dark dark magic rather than you know a science i think it could be something like that uh newbie wants to make peace i'll accept peace i'll take that peace oh my god please end this game jesus christ i'm in this game leave me go let me go i want to leave this game of sieve do 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 my computer's overheating it's a hot day Michael Keating. Do 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 How do I still not have a nuke? Am I missing the nukes? I've been building them for what feels like an hour and I still don't have any nukes. So many of my cities are making them. The amount of cities that I have. Jesus. The list goes on and on. On man, oh, Jesus Christ! We're almost there, boys. Two more cities. They're, they're in range. We can see them. We can see the cities we need to take. We're right there. We're right there. We're right there at the end. Three hundred and eighteen turns of pure torture. Ten hours of gameplay. Ten hours of the most monotonous back-breaking, mind-bending gameplay. And this is on the easy version of this challenge. This is the easy version of this challenge. I'm never doing the hard version, okay? I'm never doing the hard version. It's never happening. Stop trying to make it happen. It's never happening. It's never happening. Maybe I'll do it I'd, in a year. <laughs> Kill me. You have, you, you, you just, you have no idea. You have no idea what it's like. I can't explain it to you. War of Exter- oh, oh, second last war is declared. Oh, we're, there is actually kind of a, a, a strange sense of relief as we stare down the end of this game. That was actually, this is going to be a very easy war with Egypt. Thank the Lord that this is going to be extremely straightforward. Wait, I'm at war with Sumeria? I'm at war with Sumeria. Declaring war on Egypt made me go to war with Sumeria. It's a beautiful day. It's a wonderful life. I cannot wait to date your wife. Wait, that's not how that song goes. Hold on, hold on. We're killing these dead. Beautiful. We just need to kill Uruk now. Hold on. Uh, I need like a, I need a scouting unit. No, I can't get close enough. <gasps> wait. Maybe we can get close enough. Not quite, but maybe we kill Uruk next turn? Question mark? <gasps> we can see it. The second last capital. It's within my grasp, ladies and gentlemen. The torture is almost at an end. Our victory is nigh. 
<laughs> we don't have to suffer anymore. We can live free. We can live free. Yeah, okay. You can have peace. Goodbye. Just leave me alone. It's the final countdown. Biddly doo. Biddly bippy. Do I have a nuke yet? Do I seriously not have a nuke? I'm, my mind is blown right now that I don't have a nuke. I've been building them in a whole bunch of cities. I guess I guess I just don't produce them all that fast, do I? Yeah, I guess they're just like, they take a long ass time to produce. I, I swear to God, every single domination game I play, I never get to launch the nukes. It always ends before the nukes. I can't remember the last time I launched a nuke. Genuinely can't. I don't believe it. I won the game. I won the game without firing a nuke. Second last capital. And I think I can take Rakadet next turn. I won the game without firing a nuke. How? How did I do that? What? How? I don't understand. I don't understand. How? How did I not get a... How did I... I literally... Went for nukes. Are aircraft just that strong? No matter how big the map is, no matter how gimped the map is, you can always just aircraft your way through to victory. Listen, to be honest with you, at this point, I really don't care. I just want to win. I just want to win the game. <laughs> I just want to win. Give me the victory. Give me it. Let me put this terrible challenge to bed. Right, the three artillery are in range. We hammer the city of Rakadet. The city's health drops low. We grab our jet bombers. First jet bomber strikes. Second jet bomber strikes. The city's obliterated. We capture the city and we win the game. Oh my god. That was arguably the worst challenge I've ever had to do in my life. What a terrible, never, ever ask me to do anything like this ever again. This day. Everything about this you was torture. Sure it was fun, you know, but you know what? It was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. It was torture, but it was kind of fun at the same time. Like, you know, you, you got the, uh, this was an interesting challenge. I want to, there's, there's a, like, I want to look at some of these crazy graphs. Look at the cities captured. Look how long it took me to start going to war. Oh my god, this is what we call the late game domination play. I had to wait so long until I could capture cities. And then it was like city, 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 ba 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 bam In fact, I'm pretty sure this graph is basically just a straight line, like 45 degrees from here. That's crazy. Also, look, <laughs> I was on, <laughs> I was on two cities for 80 turns. 80 turns, I was on two cities and it took me another 80 turns to get ahead of the ai look at this look at this absolutely disgusting game look at my science okay there's me i didn't get ahead of the ai on science until turn 260 when i started capturing cities i didn't get ahead of the ai on culture until turn 200 and like 300. Look at the amount of combat I was in. I was in like a pretty consistent amount of combat with the barbs, but then war is declared around about here, and that shit just goes to the moon. Ooh, I want to see units killed. I don't think I killed that many units, but I did kill a decent amount. Uh, did I even build wonders this game? I thought I just captured them. Buildings constructed. I like how my buildings constructed graph is almost like a parabola. Parabola? But yeah, there you go. Uh, we never got to use nukes. Literally. Literally. One turn from finishing a nuke. Just, you know, just because. Who am I kidding? I'm thermonuking my own units. Let's just go. Just do it. Just do it. Thermonuke him. Here he comes. Duck, 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 duck. Oh, that was a thing of beauty. Okay, I love you all very much. I hope you guys had a fun time watching this video. Never ask me to do anything like this again. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.